pin. Mrs. Oh, Burke. Mayor Reynolds. Here. Mr. Lighty. Here. Mr. Lowry. Here. Mr. Shammy. Here. Mr. Cobb. Here. Mr. Cook. Here. Vice Mayor. Here. Members present. Y'all don't mind standing for our invitation. <laughs> Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this wonderful day and this great weather and a great city, Lord. Uh, we celebrate our nation's birth. Uh, now, today, Lord, let us all remember the spirit of liberty and freedom that we can celebrate here. Stay in a great city. Amen. Yes. Mr. Lowry? Yes. Mr. Shammy? Yes. Mr. Cobb? Yes. Mr. Cook? Yes. Minutes accepted, 7 0. Communications are non signed. City Manager Report, Mr. Bridge. Yep. And we'll jump down to the informational items. Twin Creeks into the zoning code, still waiting on that legislation from the attorney. So we will update that as soon as we have that on uh, our agenda. Our 2017 state audit, we have to get audited every year. Uh, the state of Ohio has been auditing us for the past three. Um, that is scheduled to begin here in the coming weeks. We did have our pre-audit meeting uh, or, uh, late last week. Copy up to city building. Purchase or lease. Um, city building copy, our big copy that we use, is really on its last leg. A lot of times we, we uh, print stuff out, has crinkles in it or lines in it. We consistently have to get service. It is just getting to its end of life. Um, Debbie and I had a meeting with the new copier uh, lady, and she came in and talked about financing the copier lease, which sometimes we have to lease these things. The cost to lease it was $11,419, and that would equate to $190.31 $190 for 60 months. But it was a fair market lease. And what that means is at the end of that lease, you now have to buy that copier for fair market value. So that set off a couple red flags to me. And I immediately asked her, how much would it cost if we just bought the copier outright? The cost of purchase is $10,414. So, and with that, we have to have a monthly, monthly maintenance fee. What that monthly maintenance fee gives you is all your toner, if it breaks down, they'll come up and fix it. They'll replace the parts, and all that is included in your monthly maintenance agreement. Regardless if we lease or purchase, that has to be with it. It's not required, but we heavily recommend it just due to the toner cost itself. That is $108 monthly. If we want to buy the copier out lease outright, we'll have to reallocate money uh, into our budget to take some out of our reserves, because we did not budget out to buy the copier. We budgeted out for the lease payments for the year. So I will let council sit on that until July 16th, and then I will have to have an answer back to the copier company with how we want to proceed. Uh, but we do need a new device in the city building because it again on its last leg, and they are running out of parts to fix it because it's so old and sometimes it's hard to get those parts. Um, our SSI upgrade, we have uh, certain software that's run out of our uh, finance department to include taxing, utilities, um, even stuff for the budget. And right now we're with SSI, which is Software Solutions Inc. Right now we have their basic package, it's called eGov. It is not very user friendly, it's extremely antiquated, and it takes a long time to get a little report done. Uh, council, part of the capital improvement program uh, at the beginning of this year, allowed us to upgrade to their new VIP suit. And that's just going to streamline a lot of work that needs to be done out of our finance department. Um, so I am happy to report that upgrade process has started. We've had our initial meeting with them last week. I have a meeting with the gentleman tomorrow, and I do believe we start training on payroll on the 11th at 9.30 in the morning. 
So I did want to update council, as I said I would, as we progress along with this upgrade, but we are very excited to have uh, more improved efficiencies coming out of those departments. Uh, that is all I have for the uh, city manager report. I'll be happy to entertain any questions. Council? The, uh, I think the difference between save $1,000 by buying the copier, I think we should go that way, just my opinion. Also, if the, uh, the uh, maintenance agreement is 108 80 a month. Mm -hmm. Is there any break if we pay that at one time? The maintenance agreement you have over the course of the life of the um, copier. Like we've been paying our current maintenance agreement with the current copier have because it covers all the uh, uh, damaged parts or for them to come up and any toner that we go out. So unfortunately, we, we won't be able to say, all right, here's, we don't know how long we're going to have it. It could be five years, it could be six. Um, I can't inquire about that if they have like a five-year package and maybe they'll give us a reduced rate. If that's something council would like to entertain, I would gladly move in that direction. How long have we had the current copy? I started in 2012. It's been there ever since. So it's at least six years old. I've been told we've had it for at least 10. Mm -hmm. Mr. Lowry. Mr. Mayor, thank you. Mr. Bridge, so is the maintenance agreement for the lease or for the purchase? Just so I'm understanding. The maintenance agreement is separate from, it, it, the lease of purchase, no matter what option we choose, right. the maintenance agreement is highly recommended. Okay, so it's on top of either Absolutely. option. Yep. Okay, great, thank you. I assume we only got one price. From Saban? Yes, that's that's usually who we do go you think? Do you think in the best interest of looking for the best bargain for our money would be to get either one or two more estimates? I can. They're usually competitive with each other, but if you would like me to get additional quotes, I, I will gladly do that. I think that, you know, to me would would marry up with what we need to do. And I'm like Mr. Lindsay. I'd much rather see us do the purchase in order to save, let's say, a ballpark couple of thousand dollars. Okay. We've always done business with saving. I'm not saying that's not an excuse not to get other ones, but we do get kind of kickbacks for that. So I will, I will compare apples to apples. Um, and if they don't have the same exact machine, we'll try to get the exact same functions in there. Sure. What kickbacks do we get? Not so much of a kickback, but I just think that we get a little discount on the price, sell price okay. because we've just been continual customers with them. Okay. Mm -hmm. Once you get the, if you get a couple more prices and they're higher than this or competitive, you go back to this company, if this is a company we've been getting them from for the last few years, maybe we could get it cheaper with sure. a bargaining tool. Absolutely. It I seems they worked on everything else. It did. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Council, anything else? Thank you, Mr. Bridge. Mm -hmm. Moving on from City Manager Corps. Comments from members of the public. Please limit comments to five minutes or less. Comments from members of the public? Hearing none, Mrs. Byrne. Oh, committee reports none tonight. Now it's Mrs. Byrne. Okay. Um, resolutions that are none. Ordinance 1, Ordinance 18 14, public hearing and action tonight. An ordinance adopting the tax budget for the city of New Carlisle, Ohio, for the fiscal year beginning January 1, 2019, and submitting same to the auditor of Clark County, Ohio. Council. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Light. Move to action ordinance 18-14. Second. Second. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Yep. And an explanation of this ordinance. Uh, every year by July 15th, our city council has to approve what the state calls the tax budget. Um, they have to approve that by July 15th per state code. Also per state code is by July 20th, we have to have that certified copy to our county auditor. What that tax budget does is it simply states, this is how much property tax revenue that we as a city are anticipating getting uh, for, for the given year. Um, what that happens, they, we send that back to the county as a certified copy. They in return around September will send us a certified uh, uh, resource page. Basically that says you are going to get X amount of dollars in property tax revenue for this budget year. We then take that number and then we plug it into our operational budget for 2019. So the ordinance is in front of council today that they're getting ready to vote on is simply approving this tax budget so we can send it off to the auditors. Council, any questions? 
Comments? Mrs. Bergman? Mr. Cobb? Yes. Mr. Cook? Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Lighty? Yes. Mr. Lowry? Yes. Mr. Shammy? Yes. Ordinance accepted 7-0. <clears throat> Ordinance 18-15, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on 7-16-18. And ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract for the placement of new playground equipment in Smith Park in New Carlisle, Ohio. Mr. Mayor, do you mind if I add to that real quick? Yes, if you don't mind. Um, I am waiting on graphics from the actual playground manufacturer for what we're getting. So we are scheduled to have a work session on July 9th. Uh, Mr. Mayor, do you mind at that work session that I reveal the graphics for the new playground? I don't mind at all. Okay. So on July 9th, when I get those graphics, I will um, share that with everyone. And I'll also bring that graphic back to the council meeting on July 16th. Um, but we are very excited to reveal the inclusive playground equipment that we're about ready to install right out here next to our current set. Thank you. I got a question. Yes, Mr. What, what equipment are we replacing? We've already got several new equipment out there now. Well, we're not replacing anything. We're adding to it. And it's going to be handicap accessible? It is inclusive. Um, so that means that people of all disabilities would be able to use portions of it. business okay. vote for presiding officer of removal hearings of mayor and vice mayor to be conducted on July 16th 2018 procedure and opinion to be provided by law director before vote procedure for vote during removal hearing procedure and opinion to be provided by law director congressman Warren Davidson will hold his mobile office hours at the city building on the fourth Tuesday of each month from 1 30 p.m. until 2 and the city offices will be closed Wednesday, July 4th. We should still have to read the rest of the agenda. If you want to read the executive session part. Go ahead, okay. Executive session, council will hold an executive session to consider the dismissal, discipline, demotion against two public employees and pre-disciplinary charges against one public employee. Council will hold an executive session to consider threatened litigation by mayor and vice mayor. Uh, I think I'm coming. Yeah, she's coming. She called, said she'd be late. Um, so maybe I um, give her a call. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lindsay. The, uh, <clears throat> since we're going to an executive session, here at some point, I move to allow our council to be in an executive session since they'll be talking primarily, I guess, about us. Is there a second? Dr. Sofa. Did you say allow the citizens to be in that? No, our council. Oh, I'm sorry. I do apologize. I misunderstood. The first part is something separate. Right. Okay. Yep. Is there a second? Second. Discussion. One second, Mr. Cobb. Um, Mr. Cobb, go ahead. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make some thank yous to people who helped put on this. Yeah, we're on. one second. We have a motion on the floor. We're voting on allowing uh, private legal counsel into the executive session per the uh, potential litigation by myself and Mr. Lindsay. Does anyone have any comments on that? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lighty. Do we know how long? It's going to take Ms. Stinkler to get here. Do you mind if I step out and give her a call? Before we vote, I mean, I would like to know yeah. how long it's going to take. Okay. Mr. Cook? And I definitely want an opinion from the law director before we vote. Mr. Mayor, go be excused yes. for a minute. Okay. <laughs> there we go. I didn't hear all what was going on. <laughs> it's all right. No worries, my friend. I'd like to give a special thanks to Mr. Hensley of Five Metals. He used his own money and his property and leveled off a pad so we could shoot the fireworks. Uh, did not charge us anything. Uh, they done a test shot free for us and Mr. Lin or Vice Mayor Lindsay and, and Mayor Reynolds 
we're called out in the middle of the night to try to get the guys unstuck. Uh, a thank you to the Nuclear Fire Department Fire Chief and Chief Ritter, Bethel, Bethel Township and uh, Pike Township, and if you could extend that thank you, Chief. Sure. Uh, Howard IGA let us have a lot for parking. Baseball Association let us have the field. Mr. Lowry, Mrs. Lowry had a big crowd at the pool. I think you was up there too, wasn't you? Uh, I was everywhere. Huh? I was all over the place. Okay. And, you know, Mr. Sham <laughs> Mr. Shammy was there. And thank you for getting the DJ. And, and the stage. And the stage. And the stage, excuse me. I wasn't up at that end. I was, and, you know, I'd like to thank the uh, Bob from the Water Department who allowed us to get in the building if we had to. Dave from the City Works come up with the backhoe and cut a path in the gravel so we'd get the truck in. Uh, Ron Wright got all the barricades out, and I'd like to say thank you. And it takes a good group of people to put this on. My mentor here, he, he done the biggest part of the work. And I'd like to thank Mr. Bridge for his help. Thank you, That's sir. That's about all I have. Um, if everyone keeps their eyes peeled on Main Street, there's going to be a new business open in town. Uh, Simply Chick Floral is going to be where the old jewelry store used to be. It's going to be Kelly Dupree is going to be owning it. So when you see that uh, business start up, pop in and say hi to them. And, Wish them good luck. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lowry. I'm going to follow off from Mr. Cobb a little bit, but change direction. Uh, you know, Mr. Cobb thanked everybody. I just wanted to throw my two cents on the fireworks. I mean, I know a lot of people had your comments on, you know, whether we should have done them or not, but I think it had a serious domino effect on morale and the businesses alone that probably profited that night. Uh, you know, Arrow Queen, you mentioned IGA was backed. Uh, you know, just all the businesses. So, uh, you can't put a price tag on that. I mean, you know, obviously, if we're in such a, a financial bind that it's not feasible, we would not do that. But it, it wasn't just a simple throw, you know, $8,000 at fireworks, and that's all you got. I mean, it, it, it dominoed out to all the businesses and the, and the surrounding businesses and the citizens. So it was, it was a really nice time for everybody. So thank you. Mr. Cook. Well, I think we kicked off the firestorm when we requested money from city coffers and north. But I think with, as they said, what we got out of this, it was well worth it. Now, my question to the audience and to the public, do we want to do this again next year? And I can truly say at this point, if we intend to do it next year, we're going to have to start now to make it a good and better show than what we had this year. But I'm also going to say that Mr. Cobb and I spent a lot of hours, and we could sure use a lot of help. If you want to join these two miserable old men, come on along and we'll make it entertaining. But it would be a, a great enjoyment to have a few more people involved in this endeavor to make this a situation that we go back to what Nicolau used to be. We are in a progressive mode. We are growing. We're getting things done. And this was another thing that we've gotten done. And I think it's shown with the multimedia that we've had that provided some of their comments. I know we had some derogatory comments, but hey, we can't satisfy everybody. Council, anything else? I left out the sheriff's department, the two women on their bicycles. I'm sorry. But we're going to, I'm going to build them a cart to put behind there so if they arrest somebody, they can put them in the cart. <laughs> Sounds good. Thank you, ladies. Other business? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lindsay. I move to 
allow our counsel in the executive session with the litigation, considering the litigation. I think you should be in there to inform or give any, uh, you see Reddit, we still need to do any, any information that might be needed for a second. No, she read them, but you still need to do A. Good. Second. 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 Uh, second. You still need to do A. Good. I need to do A. Good. Yes, that's not a no. Any discussion? Again, awaiting the law director's opinion. Can we, uh, Mr. Mayor? Mrs. Stankler. May we, uh, pardon my tardiness, may we go back and cover under other business sections A and B, please? We already have a motion on the floor, but Mr. Lindsay would like to rescind that motion again. Again? Yes. I guess. All right. This is Dinkle. Back to A. Thank you. In uh, under section A of other business, vote for presiding officer of removal hearings of mayor and vice mayor to be conducted on July 16, 2018. Procedure and opinion to be provided by law director before vote. With uh, regard to this, in preparation for the 16th, I wanted council to have an opportunity to address this issue today so that there weren't any uh, hiccups on the 16th and so that everyone was prepared. Furthermore, I had an opportunity to allow Mr. Stewart, counsel for the mayor and vice mayor, uh, to be made aware of the issue and he is here this evening. So that will allow for some further due process protections for the mayor and the vice mayor which would be appropriate under the circumstances. Give me just a moment. So with regard to the presiding officer, uh, and I have a written opinion here uh, on this issue, which I'd like to be made part of the record this evening. And I'll provide a copy to you, Mr. Stewart, so that you have it. And provide copies to each of council. And here's a copy for our official record. We brought a couple extra copies in case anyone wants one. I need to keep at least one with me. And if anyone else wants one, you can just email me. I think I've just, I need to keep one, but Randy may have a couple extra. So with regard to this, practically speaking, when the mayor has his removal hearing, the charter reads, that the mayor is the accused. So the mayor will not be presiding over his own hearing. In that case, the vice mayor will then be presiding over that hearing. When the vice mayor has his hearing, then the vice mayor will be the accused and the mayor will be presiding over that hearing. Now, either one of those gentlemen can be called as a witness to testify 
in each other's hearings. In that case, we need to have someone else preside as the presiding officer. So this evening, I call upon counsel to elect a presiding officer to oversee the hearing when either the mayor or the vice mayor is otherwise unavailable or absent as the rules of counsel state as a result of being in the place of the accused as defined by the charter. Does counsel have any questions for me? Yes. So section 404 of the charter provides the mayor shall serve as presiding officer of council and shall preside at all meetings in attendance, which I will be in attendance. The remote hearing for council is a council meeting. Accordingly, there is no legal basis for any other uh, individual to preside over the meeting other than the mayor, which would be myself. Uh, and as you probably know, our council had spoken with uh, the special council that no one knew we had until the day after uh, with Mr. John Podertsky or Podertsky, and they agreed with our attorney that uh, this would largely, the, hand, the hearing would be handled by a structure already agreed. Uh, the, we, you know, we opened, I would open the meeting and we'd turn it over to both the special council and then our council, and then I would resume uh, presiding over the meeting once council's closed arguments have been given. I mean, there's no, Ohio law makes it clear that uh, where there's, you know, a city charter sets out the specific procedure for removal of a public official, it must follow, must be followed to the letter, uh, sorry, must be followed to the letter in order to be effective. If council alters the removal procedure by changing the presiding officer at the hearing in violation of its own charter, that will be grounds for the court to set aside the entire removal hearing. Mayor Reynolds. Mr. Podgurski did not make an agreement. I have spoken with Mr. Podgurski, and I do not believe that to be factual. So with all due respect, I, that, is, that is not an agreement that was reached. Furthermore, Mr. Podgurski has been retained to present the hearing, and he is doing that. Mr. Podgurski had shared with Mr. Stewart that these Procedural issues are within the jurisdiction of the law director. Mr. Podgurski called me on two occasions to tell me that he had been sharing this with Mr. Stewart. He also called me on those two occasions to tell me that Mr. Stewart was wanting to engage in settlement and discussion and directed him to me. And Mr. Stewart never contacted me until late Friday with a settlement letter barely giving me an opportunity to get a, we were rushing, Randy and I, on late Friday, uh, barely having an opportunity to get an executive session on the agenda this evening so that I could update the remaining council members because a letter from your council and Mr. Lindsay's council was sent to Mr. Podgurski, well, not was, to me. He was the special so, legal council that was hired. If there's miscommunication, I have further communicated with your counsel, and I've included Mr. Podgurski on it so that there can be no further miscommunication. But Mr. Podgurski and I have not been confused in what the relationship is. And I apologize if your attorney has been confused in any regard, because we're not trying to make this complicated. We are trying to protect the due process interests of all parties involved. So and that would be the charter. city all of council okay. and the citizens because everyone has a stake in this and that's that's my job is to is to protect all of the interests and that's why before starting this procedure i contacted the ethics commission and i contacted the ohio board of professional conduct to ensure that i was properly weighing all of those interests Okay. Well, I just so, want to make sure that everyone have, knows that Section 404, which we'll be violating our own charter, but I just want to make sure that it was noted into the record. Before I move on, because your counsel is here, and I understand that you've read from his letter that he wrote to me, 
because I read it carefully and I considered his opinions and our opinions aren't that different. Um, I wanted to ask your counsel, recognizing that you're in charge of this meeting right now, but I wanted to invite your counsel, if you deem it appropriate, uh, to share any opinions on the matter because I think that that would be appropriate since I ensured that he knew the subject matter was going to be discussed on your behalf. Yes, please. Yes, please. It's nice to meet you. Well, thank you for, I'll be brief, but thanks for a short opportunity just to address you. First of all, um, I've sat where you've sat. I've been a council member. I'm a county commissioner where I live. Uh, I know these are not easy jobs. And so uh, to the extent that we may disagree on other things, I do want to say thank you for the work that you do uh, because I know that uh, it's important work and we don't have enough people sometimes stepping up to do that. Um, you know, if we proceed to a hearing here in two weeks, obviously we'll have a lot of other things to talk about. Um, a lot of other points of law to, to argue. Uh, but I think it's important not to get off on the wrong foot. You know, I think the mayor has pointed out, uh, your charter says that at all meetings of council, the mayor presides. It doesn't have any language in the charter referencing uh, being absent. I think we all know what absent means. Absent means you are not here. Uh, there's precedent for the mayor being a part of these hearings even when he is testifying. 2013, we had a removal hearing here in New Carlisle. Uh, Mayor uh, McLaughlin uh, was a witness during the hearing. There was never any procedure that said that he needed to be removed as the presiding officer because he was a witness. Um, the charter, I'll, I'll stand to be corrected. I've spent a lot of time with it. I don't believe it refers to the accused anywhere in the charter. Uh, again, what we proposed to special counsel is simply that the meeting would be opened as usual with the presiding officers that exist under the charter. The meeting would then essentially be turned over to counsel, who would take testimony, cross-examine witnesses according to basically an agreed structure. And then at the conclusion of, of closing statements, the presiding officer would then basically retake over the meeting and go from there. Um, I, I would have a lot of concern if, the, if, the point, if, if one of the elements of this opinion, which, which again, I'm, I'm reading for the first time as we speak, uh, says that somehow uh, the mayor and the vice mayor are not allowed to vote on the appointment of a temporary officer. I don't have any, uh, I see no basis for that in the charter uh, in any respect. Uh, this matters because the Ohio Supreme Court, uh, in a case that we've cited to, to the law director in 1974, made very clear, if, the, if a charter community puts together a set of rules for how removal is to be done, you have to follow it to the letter. You can't make up the law as you go. You can't add terms that weren't there before. Uh, you can't change the presiding officer if your charter says the presiding officer is the mayor. And you can't uh, you know, change the procedure in which a vote is going to occur if all your charter says is at the conclusion of the hearing, within 30 days, you have to vote. So we're not looking for anything radical here, but the, but the, but the stakes are pretty clear. You know, if, Frankly, you make my job easier if you go this route because you're giving me just one more grounds to invalidate the entire hearing on procedural grounds, whereas you've not followed your own charter. So, uh, you know, our position is certainly that the mayor and the vice mayor don't lose their, their rights as those elected officials simply because at this point, only one council member has made a motion. I mean, the idea that the mayor and the vice mayor lose all of their authority over hearing, despite what the charter says, because one council member is making a motion, uh, it's just not supported by the, by the charter. So, uh, you know, this isn't any effort to gain any kind of advantage during the hearing. As I said, the hearing will be conducted by the, by the council members. Uh, but frankly, there's pre this flies in the face of the most recent removal hearing that this city has already put on. Um, the charter does not talk about the accused. It does not talk about absent being anything other than, I think, what we all would understand absent actually means, which is they're not at the meeting. So. Um, we would envision you know, the mayor opening the meeting, the mayor closing the meeting, uh, and voting to be done according to the rest of the charter. I'll take questions, otherwise I'm happy to retake my seat. Thank you. I have a, I have a few other um, remarks to make on this, and then council can make a motion. Uh, 
if it is so inclined to follow my direction to have a temporary presiding officer. With regard to the precedent that Mr. Stewart referenced when there was a removal hearing in the past that involved Mr. Uh, Ethan Reynolds, the mayor was not Mr. Reynolds. I believe the mayor was uh, Mr. Lowry, or no, it was um, Lowell. Mr. McLaughlin. Uh, McLaughlin back then. So uh, former Mayor McLaughlin was not in the seat of the accused. And so that is not precedent in a situation that is factually similar to what you are faced with here. And that is a very important issue that you need to recognize. And we carefully reviewed this situation to ensure that you are following your charter because we do want the charter to be complied with. We agree, Mr. Stewart and I, that it's very important that the charter and the rules of counsel be followed. When the rules of counsel say that the mayor is in charge of all meetings, the That's rules the of counsel are certainly not expecting that you're going to have a removal hearing at every meeting that you come to. So there are special things that occur at meetings, and certainly one wouldn't be expected to have a removal hearing where an individual then takes the special term on as the accused. And if you liken this to a jury trial, the accused is not a fact finder. You have the accused who sits in judgment, and you have the fact finders who make the judgment. And that is why you cannot have the mayor sitting as the presiding officer of his own hearing and the vice mayor sitting as his own presiding officer of his hearing. And you need to have someone separate filling those shoes for purposes of fairness and integrity. So that is the legal opinion governing that issue. Mr. Lindsay. Mrs. Baker, can you tell me in the charter and or the rules of counsel where what you just said is located? Because I have not read that any place in our charter. Well, the legal opinion that I've given you clearly states the basis in for my where- My opinion and your legal opinion violates our charter. Sir, sections 4A and B are the rules of counsel where the mayor acts as presiding officer and the accused, can we uh, point out for the vice mayor where it states that the, where the language of the accused, the forfeiture of office under section 4.08, it states vacancies, forfeiture of office, filling of vacancies. And then if you go under section B, it says forfeiture of office. A council member shall forfeit office if, in the judgment of council expressed by a vote of five members, comma, the accused. One, doesn't apply. Two, doesn't apply. Uh, three, is the charge that has been raised with regard to you and Mr. Reynolds has engaged in misconduct. And so that is where the accused comes from. Mr. Stewart? And then the language Mr. absent. Mr. Stewart has something. If I went once I'm done answering his question, of course. And you've answered it, ma'am, thank you. I, I'm going to finish. And then the absent language also comes from the rules of counsel. Mm -hmm. 
comes from subsection C, is section four, presiding officer at meetings. In the case of absence of both the mayor and vice mayor at a council meeting, the council shall select a temporary presiding officer by a majority vote of members present. And I've explained earlier, we need the selection because if one of you are called as a witness, then we're going to need somebody to fill in. So that is the reliance from your charter and your rules of counsel to fully address your question. I think it's important to point out when we're analogizing this to a trial, uh, this is not a trial. The rules of evidence don't apply here. This is a political remedy that is entirely within the discretion of counsel as to how it's going to go as long as you follow your charter. Uh, to follow the logic of the law director, she's, she's essentially saying that the mayor and the vice mayor cannot be allowed to sit in their seats and be presiding officer because essentially they're the trial of fact like a judge uh, is not is not allowed to, to be involved. Well by that logic they shouldn't be allowed to vote on their new week, but your charter is very clear. They still have their votes so long as they are members of the council. Uh, they are the trial of fact, they aren't going to be involved in voting. So um, you know I, I, I've heard the explanation here, I've heard no other elaboration on the definition of absence to mean anything other than what I think everybody in this room understands absent to be. Absent is, you're not here. You're not in the room. You're not sitting in your chair. Um, absent does not mean that for maybe at some point you may be called as a witness. It means you're not here. So, you know, it would be for counsel the way where you want to go, but I would say, what, what is the benefit you're gaining by doing this compared to the possibility that I'm right which is violating your charter, in which case we're going to do this hearing all over again. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lowry. Thank you, sir. Um, okay, I'm sitting here looking at this, and thank you both for your explanations. Yes, and, and I just have one further question to make, or to comment to make. This is, as, as Mr. Stewart points out, he's claiming that this is my characterization of something, and I do take exception to that. This is not the law director's characterization of anything. This is a this is a process that is New Carlisle's written in a charter. And so this is the process that the founders of the city's charter, long before I came along, wrote. And so all I can do is advise on what that process is. And I'm sure that's what you meant to say. I'm sure you didn't mean to attribute that to me because it's not mine. It's the city's and it's the citizens. And council, through its process, has brought us here today. And this is what the process is. It's not something that I call it. It's a hearing. It would be fair to say that the prior law director did not come to the conclusion that the mayor, if he is a witness, has to be absent. Right. That's what the prior law director Stewart. Yes. Mr. Stewart. There have been many things that the prior law director did and did not do, and I am not going to sit here and answer for any of them. Mr. Stewart, I was not here. I am not going to answer for any of them. The city is in a very different place now. Mr. Lowry. Yeah, thank you. Um, Again, thank you both for being here tonight and your and your comments and professional opinions. Under 4.08, under Section C, Procedure of Forfeit Office, the member says the member so charged shall be given a hearing, not given or You see where I'm going? It's to be, he is the, the, the individual to be given the hearing, not run the meeting. Not to, not to, uh, not exactly, thank you, to be the court of the hearing. 
am I wrong when I read that? He has to be given a hearing. He be given, one. not. Sir? I am, with all due respect. This is Tinkler? Yes, but no, you're mayor. Actually, I'm still mayor, so you're going to wait one second. I understand Ms. that, but Ms. we are not going Tinkler? to have another attorney instruct my clients. No, he's asking a question, which is something you've asked us, so I. We are so. not going to have your counsel. We are not going to have your personal counsel question the city. Okay, can I ask you a question? Do you know what the definition of absent means? I decided to look it up. So it's not present, in place, not on occasion, or as a part of something. Which I just no, want to make that's sure that's fine, but we are not record. going to have your personal counsel, so. because you are mayor, question your fellow council members. Aren't you our attorney, too? I am, but the, I am the city's but. counsel. But we are not going to have you, as presiding officer, subject your fellow council members to interrogation by your attorney. Interrogation. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, can I continue, please? Yes, you may. Okay, let me ask you a question. I don't know if this is. Can the question be asked? And this is. I don't know if this is ethical to do, but can we here tonight? Can we shut, can we shut the fans off? I know it's hot, or I can to hear better. Yeah. I don't know if this is the right key or not. I know the echo in the room makes it really hard for people to hear. See if you can shut them off real quick before I continue. There's a there's a breaker in the room if you don't have the key to it, the I think. The key's in the back of that room right there. Okay, we are not, if we were to go to the hearing, or we make it to the hearing, but tonight, can we, we cannot ask legally or ethically down this line how we feel about the removal. I'm saying I, I, we can't say how would you vote in the future on this subject, could you? We couldn't say yes, no, no, example, you know what I'm saying? Just, to, and, and the reason I'm asking is if, you know, I don't know if council supports the removal of the mayor or vice mayor, and if it doesn't have the possible support of it, then why go through with it, is what I'm saying. Can we, can we? You want to discuss whether or not there is support for removal? That's what I'm asking, are we allowed to do so? You can break rules of council and have discussion on any topic you want to. Okay. And a second question. You know, between the two, the two comments between your professional opinion and your professional opinion, sir, I would assume that the argument is, is if Mr. Mayor was to run his own hearing, what are the chances of it being, the outcome being changed or swayed to benefit his self? As in we've seen in past council meetings where a meeting was shut down so things could not be talked about. Well, I, I can speak to that. If, if. And I'm just asking a fair question. I'm just throwing it out there. I mean, that's, I, I would assume that that would be some of our concerns. You have concerns of conflict of interest of the mayor presiding over his own hearing. Correct, correct. I mean, like I said, if. if and, that the, is, and that is why, in my opinion, in interpreting the charter and the rules of counsel that the person sitting as the accused cannot also preside over his own hearing. Thank you. Mr. Stewart. I, I think that's to, to the point I made earlier. I think the difference is the presiding officer is not going to be the judge of this hearing. We're not going, you know, I already discussed with Mr. Bob Gerstein and I, I think it's fair to say you agree on this. The, the evidence rules are not going to be as strict as they are in court. There's not going to be an objection that the presiding officer makes a determination as to whether I get to call you know, a witness or not. 
Uh, he's going to call every witness he wants. You're going to get to hear witnesses that maybe I would object to in a normal trial scenario. By the same token, I plan to call witnesses that he, he might prefer I wouldn't uh, and introduce evidence that you may prefer I wouldn't. But this, all this says is that all the evidence gets to be aired, and my, what I had discussed with him is that we would send a green advance and we were going to call the witnesses. Uh, exchange all of our exhibits beforehand, so there's no surprises as to what's going to be discussed. Uh, so essentially, all of the presiding officer would do is open the meeting, turn it over to counsel, Mr. Podgersky would turn it over to me, we would make our closing statements, and I think the important thing is at that point, once the hearing on removal is concluded, that the presiding officer immediately retain, immediately be returned to the duties that they have as mayor and vice mayor. The conclusion of the hearing. So no, I don't think this is intended to give anybody an advantage during the hearing. Uh, but likewise, I think it's important to, to say right now we only have one motion from one council member to remove the two gentlemen, and the idea that they lose the powers of vice mayor and mayor simply by that fact, I think we very much disagree. There, there are evidentiary rulings to be made in these hearings. And John Podgersky and I have discussed that. So with all due respect, I absolutely, and I spoke with John today, cannot agree with the representations that are being made. So if council wants to entertain something like this to allow Mayor Reynolds, who will be sitting in the seat of the accused, to be presiding over his own hearing, then um, a neutral third party is going to need to be sitting here to oversee uh, the evidence because you cannot uh, have the accused serving in that position. And uh, it, um, it would be my recommendation uh, and it's, uh, my intention to have somebody to advise because you have a non uh, non lawyer anyhow um, that and and I at some point will be giving testimony so someone needs to be advising non lawyer on objections and I will have someone that is uh, from the outside filling that capacity but I I. I've given you my opinion, so I do not need to re-explain that. But these are issues for council to consider. Yeah. Mr. Lighty. Mr. Mayor, I would hope that the opinion of council would mean something to you and Vice Mayor Lindsay. So is it okay to ask the rest of council, I mean, how do you guys feel about uh, the mayor and vice mayor uh, presumably running the meeting during this hearing? <clears throat> Mr. Lindsay. The, uh, from what I'm understanding from council, Mayor Reynolds will open the meeting. He will turn it over, the floor over to the special council. He will do whatever he does. The special council will turn it over to our council. He'll do whatever he does. That him as mayor or presiding officer has no play in it once the attorneys take over until they're done and then it comes back to the mayor for a or whatever happens after that. That's my understanding. This is also it's my understanding this is not a court law. If if uh, it was then things would be different. I saw the floor. Mr. Chairman, you had something? Yeah, Mr. Mayor. I uh, recently uh, wrote some notes down. Uh, I did miss the last meeting uh, for a family emergency. I apologize for that. But uh, I just want to brush a couple things here. And uh, I put similar to Councilman Cook's comment at our last meeting. I wanted to share some thoughts. I, I think are important to share before these removal motions go any further. Our charter says that the council member can be removed for misconduct, but it does not define what misconduct means. 
So to my ring, the charter leaves it to council, which is considered to be misconduct that is bad enough to justify removal, removing an elected official and officially overturning the will of the voters. The city elected uh, Mayor Reynolds and Vice Mayor Lindsay, excuse me, and to throw them out of office over petty personal disputes would be a disservice to the will of the voters. Ohio law, to my understanding, defines misconduct as gross negligence of duty, gross immortality, drunkenness, misfeasance, malfeasance, and nonfeasance is guilty of misconduct in office. I've listened for weeks now to what has been complained about with Mr. Uh, uh, Mayor Reynolds and Mr. Lindsay as nothing I have heard comes close to meeting that standard. Mayor Reynolds allegedly did fix, didn't fix, file, excuse me, tax returns on time, but he did pay his taxes. My understanding is that we have other residents and city employees who did the exact same thing. The city has, hasn't been harmed, the residents haven't been harmed, and I don't believe a, a court would uphold us throwing a mayor out of office for such minor grounds. Now moving to Vice Mayor Lindsay, the idea we are seriously debating whether to throw him out of office uh, over the content, content of his email signatures is ridiculous. He did not encourage Mr. Grimm to sue the city, and he hasn't helped the lawsuit, that lawsuit anyway. Some people may not like the bill, but they need to get over it. Vice Mayor Lindsay was elected to this position. It's good uh, when we can all get along, but sometimes we won't. Local government is not always easy, and it's not supposed to be. So now it's very clear from what has occurred in the last few weeks that this matter goes further and it's going to get worse for the city, not better. If we vote to remove either Mayor Reynolds or Vice Mayor Lindsay, that would likely, they would likely sue the city to regain their positions. And I think this would be, and that they would be successful. Either way, it's gonna cost the city a lot of money that we don't need to be spending on such petty business, in my opinion. I think it was highly inappropriate to selectively release only Mayor Reynolds' tax information at our meeting on June 4, 2018, and I think it was misled to believe that we somehow have no choice but to head down this road. I thought, I've thought better of that in weeks since, and I want this council to know that I will not be voting to remove either one of them. Councilman Cook made good points at our previous meeting saying that he would like to avoid the negativity and expensive, expensive lawsuit, and I agree with him. So based on my vote, no removal hearing will ultimately be successful, and we all are going to, do, all we're going to do is drag the city and its personnel through ex expensive litigation for nothing. So I would suggest we table the pending removal motions and get back to work for the citizens of New Carlisle. That's all. Well, well, thank you, Mr. Shammy, for letting us know where you stand. Sure. Um, rest of the council, I guess that just pretty much changes everything. Uh, Mr. Shammy, I, I don't believe these were uh, petty personal disputes. You know, these were facts given to us, and just like anything else, we have to deal with them. And I'm sorry that you know it's being perceived in that manner, but you know, if there's any disputes, is you know, there was a time during the meeting where we had things to discuss, and it was shut down. It was shut down. And the fact that we're sitting here and we're talking about letting them run the meeting, their own hearing, you know, and there's, why does that seem like a good idea to anybody? It, it really doesn't. So I guess I agree with you, Mr. Shammy. If you, if you are not going to vote to remove them, we need to ask ourselves, why are we going to spend taxpayers' money to put ourselves through this? And uh, there's so many other things I want to comment on that but you know there's really no point so you know council i think we need to have a discussion on that we need to break rules of council to discuss it but you know do we need to go through with this hearing since we already know how we're how it's going to turn out as has been pointed out we're going down the road to spend a lot of the citizen taxpayer money 
It is apparent we do not have five votes to remove these two gentlemen from council. Therefore, I think, again, as I stated in a previous meeting, it would be up to the citizens in a recall petition if they think these two are guilty of misconduct. I think what we've got is two legal opinions. I'm not an attorney. Consequently, I'm hearing both sides. I don't know what's right, what's wrong. But I do know in the past six months, this council has not done what we were elected to do. Now, I personally think that we ought to call a halt to this dog and pony show, street brawl, whatever you want to call it. But I am a little bit tired of the antics that we're going through. Let's get back to what we were elected to do and stop this dog and pony show. If the citizens think that they should be removed, get the recall petition out. Mr. Sir Lowry. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, a question for you, Ms. Tankler, and then for you, sir. What was the, uh, for, for not filing your taxes, what is the criminal status of that broken law? Not filing it a municipal tax return is a first degree misdemeanor. Okay. Is that separate charges for all five years? Hang on, just. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Is that separate charges for each year? Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Punishable by. So, what, um, would you agree with that? Is that correct? Yes. Okay, so it is a misdemeanor that both attorneys agree that's a misdemeanor. My opinion, not petty, when you break the law five years in a row and claim that you didn't get a letter, are you serious? I don't need a letter to remind me that I need to put my seatbelt on every day. Uh, I've never received a letter and I've paid mine and filed my city taxes every time. I, uh, I don't understand the argument there. But, I mean, as Mr. Shamey has said, if that's the way he feels, and uh, I, what, 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 can, what is considered misconduct at that point, Mr. Shammy, if you don't mind me asking? If breaking the law five years in a row is not misconduct, what is? What's a traffic ticket, Mr. Lowry? You, oh, you're right. It's definitely a traffic ticket when you get a speeding ticket in Fairborn or running a red light. Mm -hmm. But it's definitely not on the same level. I just stated what I stated. Excuse me, Mr. Mayor. I say what I stated, and I'm standing fine. No, I'm not, I'm not trying to change no, your mind. Not. I'm not trying to change your mind. But I'm just curious as to this council or anyone out there that at what point, and I forget who said it earlier, whether it was one of the attorneys or one of our council members, that you know misconduct is a very big word. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, um, it's punishable by up to a thousand dollar fine and six months, up to six months in jail. Okay. So I mean, where do you draw the line? Is all I'm saying. Uh, you know, I think it's it's not fair to say we're going to go after uh, John Citizen for for not filing his taxes, but it's it's going to bite us every time and say, well, you know, the mayor didn't do it for five years, so why should I? But as Mr. Shammy said, it, he's stated his opinion, so yeah, I agree that that changes everything. Council, Mr. Mayor, wait one second. I'm going to go, Mr. Cobb. It, it's obvious we're not going to get the five votes needed to remove and to continue pursuing this it, it's going to cost money all the way around which we don't have I mean I'm not an attorney I don't know the law I go by advice from you since you are the law director for the city but it, it's, it's come down to where I know, I, don't, I can tell right now we're not going to get the five votes needed to remove them. Like Bill said, the best way is the citizens run a recall petition. Is the only way I, that I see now. I mean, I don't know where else to go or how to go with it. Yes, again. This is kind of a, how you want to say it, a precursor 
to whether or not a court will find Ethan guilty on the tax violation. At that point, I think we're, we've got the cart before the horse. I personally, again, think that we need to put a halt to this whole nine yards. If the courts find him guilty, at that point, could it possibly be brought up again as far as a, another hearing or, or extend the hearing? Well, it's my understanding from communication from his counsel, and he can correct me if I'm wrong, that some of the taxes owed were not, in fact, paid and that all of the taxes now that were not filed over the years have been filed and that some deal with CCA has been reached on penalties and payments of outstanding taxes. Is that correct, Mr. Stewart? Because that's what any citizen would do. The city, my office, has not gotten in the middle of dealing with the mayor. We've allowed him to deal with his issues just like we've allowed anyone else. And um, so when the mayor has stated that all of the taxes were paid in reading Mr. Stewart's correspondence, I don't think that that was accurate. But have I correctly stated the situation, Mr. Stewart? I think substantially so. Have you allowed to Elaborate just just very slightly. Go ahead. She's um, speaking to Mike. You know, I think these are all issues that we can get into if there are a lot of Talking hearing. to Mike. Um, but again, every every <laughs> month. Hold on. Should he talk? Should he, he talk, talk through a mic? It'll, so. it'll, it'll pick up. Okay. <laughs> it'll pick up. No. Maybe right here would be fine. Back to we just talking. To the it, it's not a, it's not a uh, voice amplifier. It goes to our video. Okay. Understood. You don't have Thank to have it. Yeah. Just gotcha. put on your. Thank you. Yeah. Um. I, I don't really want to get into a lot of the merits of this. I think that should be reserved for the hearing if there is one. Um, if the city decides to bring charges, we will have we will have defenses and we will have counterclaims based on the manner in which the, the tax information was released to the public, which we believe was done uh, in violation of the New Carlisle Ordinance. The only thing I'll add to the to the factual description is uh, all but uh, Mayor Reynolds owed two thousand four hundred twenty-four dollars in city income tax uh, during the period at issue. Uh, he paid all of the income taxes on time for 2017, 2016, and 2015. Uh, we did since determine that he owed $22 uh, from 2013, $60 for 2014, uh, both of which were promptly paid. Uh, and so uh, in discussions with CCAA, CCA, uh, they have provided us uh, an email saying they cannot confirm that any notice uh, was sent to Mayor Reynolds that, that these filings were delinquent. Uh, they have waived certain penalties based on that fact, saying that since they cannot confirm that he was actually informed that these filings were not made, uh, they were not going to file. They were not going to charge uh, the full amount of the penalty, penalties that they could have. Again, I think these are more questions for for a hearing. But since the matter brought up, I thought it would be important to to clarify just those points. And was that because the city wasn't using CCA back then? No, it's not for 2015, 16, or 17. Well, why CCA wasn't engaged with New Carlisle back then. So how would CCA be able to confirm that? Uh, they confirmed 2015, 16, and 17. So how, how would CCA be able to confirm whether or not notices were mailed or not mailed when we weren't using them? No, no, 2015. I can tell you that he was not charged. They could not confirm that he was given any notices for 15, 16, and 17. We weren't using CCA in 15. So how were they able to confirm or not confirm? They did not specify uh, 2013. So if they weren't handling, they said for their record, since they have been handling tax collection, they could not show the notice of being sent. So if at the hearing, you know, we want to talk about 2013, that, that very well would well be the case. When did we start using CCA? And 17 was our first four year. 16 was our first four year. 16. Yeah. So 16. So my point is, we didn't use them in 15. So how? So how were they? They weren't able to confirm in 15. They have confirmed that no notices have been sent from that. If the city has evidence and wants to provide certified mail showing that the notices were sent for the other years, then that'd be a matter for a hearing. Right. But 
there is no um, there is there is no requirement to serve notices um, by certified mail. That certified mail requirement only kicks in under the statute for the amnesty uh, provision, and that is when you start the prosecution uh, uh, process, which we did not, which we decided we were dealing with the elected official and the employees before we started the prosecution so that the city had confidence in knowing that we were dealing with everyone fairly. And that is how we justify the harm that was committed, which I clearly explained when I was here to address this in the beginning, because you have to know that your government is being treated the same way that your citizens are being treated in order to know that everyone is on a level playing field and that people are not being treated unfairly. Mr. Mayor, Mr. would we be able to, you know, we do this on multiple subjects, not just things as the magnitude of this, whether it's water related, and people, the audience hears a lot of things. Should we allow them time to give comments or question on this? If there was to be a motion to suspend those of council. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Lowry, I'll make a motion to suspend the rules of council to allow audience members a time for question or comment if needed second comments nope. I didn't hear the motion. Oh, okay mr lowry yes mr shammy yes mr cobb yes mr cook yes vice mayor lindsay yes Mayor Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Lighty? Yes. Motion accepted, 7 0. <clears throat> Does any citizens have comments from the public? You have five minutes. Please state your name and your address. <clears throat> My name is Brandy Mullet. I live at 522 Hamilton Avenue. Um, I wrote down a whole bunch of stuff that I was going to say here, and I've already changed my mind. Um, Mr. Cook, I think you said it best. This has been drug out entirely too long. It's become evidently clear that it is not going to pass, even if there is a hearing. That is not to say that I agree with it in any way, shape, or form, because I most certainly do, do not. Excuse me. But it's just a waste of time at this point. It's like kids flinging sand in a sandbox. I understand both sides and where you're coming from. Mr. Mayor, I understand that it's difficult to be labeled as an accused um, and tempers are flaring. This has become entirely too contentious. And I think the best option is like Mr. Cook said, the uh, citizens need to start a recall petition and let the public decide where it goes from here. In the event that there were actually criminal charges brought about and Mr. Reynolds was actually convicted of something, I think it would potentially be worth revisiting. But I also think the likelihood of that happening is very low. Um, so at what point do you just have to let bygones be bygones and get back to doing the job that we, the people, elected you to do and stop wasting hours upon hours upon hours of time sitting here bickering about who's right and who's wrong. You know, we'll, the public will decide how this needs to be handled and whether or not there's true belief of misconduct by either party. Um, I think in Mr. Reynolds' case, it's a little more clear cut. Um, but Mr. Lindsay, I think you also, it, it does seem like a petty personal thing, as Mr. Shammy said, but it's a really fine line between creating a hostile working environment and not. And I think all parties involved in this for all of the issues that have been brought about 
You guys are really teetering on that line and it's just getting ugly. I want to see you guys work together. I love the fireworks. I thought that was an amazing thing. I was thrilled when I went I went late. I didn't get there till about 930, but it was packed. I mean, everything was packed and that's what I want to see come from our city. And like Mr. Cook said, you know, he would love to have help. Well, how about instead of bickering about this, who's right, who's wrong, who's going to get kicked off council, pass our porch bylaws so that we can actually help Mr. Cook and use the $10,000 that you've budgeted to us to do something positive for the city of New Carlisle and stop all of this drama. Thank you. Mrs. Mullet, uh, I believe that Mrs. Dinkler still has those bylaws, correct? Parks and Rec bylaws. Yes, I do. Okay. Once, once we get them. I'm sure we'll vote on them. Okay. Well, my issue is that it's taken time. I Becky know. and I and Stacy Lighting were approved, appointed, or however you word it, to the Parks Board over a year ago. Yep. And we just haven't, and you know, if, there, if the expectation is that we serve a quote unquote two year term as much as, you know, as any other parks or any other committee or board in the city, we've already wasted a year. Yeah. And I just don't want next year to be a situation where somebody says, well, why do we get the parks 10 grand? Because they didn't even do anything. Yeah. Our hands are tied and we can't do anything. It's not that we don't want to. There's tons of stuff we want to do. We're just waiting to have the authority to do it correctly. Yeah. I feel for you, trust me. Mrs. McKenzie. Uh, my name's Becky McKenzie and I live at 521 Hamilton Avenue. Um, I, I disagree with Brandy, <laughs> weird, um, but I don't think it's bickering. I think these are serious things and I'm disappointed in you, Chris Shammy, for one. Um, at the meeting on June 4th, you voted no the first time on suspending rules of council to allow, um, to allow people to ask questions and to allow Randy to speak. You said that you didn't know anything about what Bill had said to Randy before the meeting, but everyone else had heard about it from the attorney. So did you lie or did you not hear her? Mrs. McKenzie, you can't ask a question if someone's lying or not. That wouldn't be parliamentarian. Okay, Just so Sorry. I guess I'll have to say that he was lying because that would if also everybody be received, of you, but <laughs> that's okay. It still, would be unparliamentary. We have Robert's Rules of Order. But. Well, I'm going to say it anyways because it was a lie. <laughs> if everyone was given the sure. same information and you said that you weren't given that information, I don't understand how every single other person was given that information and you were not. That makes no sense to me. So. When you sit up here and you defend them and you say it's petty stuff, when you sat up there and lied too, that makes me feel like you don't understand what misconduct is yourself. If you're willing to commit it, I'm upset about this. It makes me emotional because we shouldn't have to be dealing with this crap. It's not petty that you didn't file your taxes. It's a lie. Why would you not do that? You can't rely on somebody else to do that for you. That is your job as an adult. Bill, I will reiterate what I said on June 4th. You disgust me. The way that you talked to Randy, the things that you said to him, did you have that conversation with anybody else on council? I'm, I'm assuming not. So that probably wasn't a friendly conversation. I'm sorry? I do not have to reply to Yeah, I know. I remember you said you did not give up your First Amendment rights. But when you were elected, you decided that you were going to represent the people of New Carlisle. And you acting like that is not a good representation of me. I don't accept that. And that, to me, is misconduct. When you act like that. It's unnecessary. This shouldn't be swept under the rug. You should vote the correct way. You should vote the way you're supposed to. I don't understand why anybody is excusing this behavior at all. We pay you. We pay council members. 
oh, let's just sweep it under the rug. Let's just go ahead and move on. You should resign. If you don't want us to spend city money to do the hearing, then you should resign because you clearly did not file your taxes and you, I, I, I just can't even, I don't even know what else to say. I just don't, I'm disgusted. I'm giving your name and address, please. My name's Linda Eggleston Nowakowski. I live at 317 South Main Street. I have to agree with every, everything that she said. I don't know how a person, an adult in this country today could think that walking up to Randy and asking that question was not illegal. I don't, I, I can't even imagine how you could conceive of that. It makes me ashamed. How does somebody who's gone to college and is, how old are you now? 24, 25? One more year, 26. 26, even worse. 26 years old and you don't know that you have to sign a piece of paper when you file your tax returns. To ignore this and say, oh, it's just nothing makes me ashamed to be here. And trust me, if you do it, I'm going to be the first person who has recall petitions out for all five of you. Mr. Graham. Dale Graham, 114 South Main Street. We have a procedure in this city uh, for uh, removal of, of council members. A claim is made, a hearing is held, Evidence is presented on both sides, and then, then a decision is made. But I am appalled that this council has already made decisions without hearing one bit of evidence. I am ashamed of all of you. This is not how a city council is supposed to operate. If you're, going to have, if, if you're going to just decide on your own, then why do we even have votes on anything? We'll just say, hey, we're going to do this. We're going to make this an ordinance. Let's just go ahead and do it. You're not, you're not following the rules that you're supposed to be following. Right, Chris? Thank you. OK, so with uh, Vice Mayor Lindsay, the rules were break, broken because it's supposed to be an internal uh, HR investigation not a public hearing or public knowledge, and as well as with tax information. So that's what I'm basing my decision on. It's not that the fact, what was said, whether it was, it was wrong, yeah, I get it, or right, don't know. But I'm just saying that that should have been handled both, both things internally. That's all I have to say. This is moment. Okay, I lost this in my somewhat emotionally fueled rant earlier. In the event that the hearing goes forward and you are allowed to maintain your position as presiding officer, it's been mentioned multiple times that the presiding officer's responsibility is to open the meeting and close the meeting. In the event that the vote was to remove, what happens then with because then you wouldn't have a presiding officer. Like, he wouldn't be the presiding officer anymore, so how would the meeting be closed, I guess is what I want to know. Like, if we have the, if they have the hearing and there was a vote to remove Mr. Reynolds, he would no longer be the presiding officer of the meeting, so then whose responsibility would it be to close the meeting? Lindsay. That's correct. If there was a vote and he was removed, he would then forfeit his seat. Okay, so then that duty to close the meeting would fall on Mr. Lindsay? That's correct. Okay. Um, 
Also, Mr. Shammy, I just want to point out something. You're talking about how tax records and this and that are not, should not be public information. Neither should someone's sexual orientation. Right. Mr. Lowry, do you want to withdraw your motion or do we want to have a motion to table this? Are we talking? Or, sorry, go ahead. No, I was saying, well, are you referring to the? No, 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 no. Uh, your motion to remove Mr. Myself and Mr. Lowry, would you like to withdraw your motion to with Mr. Lindsay? Well, or do we have a motion to table? And they could still speak, but I just want to know. Okay. Well, I think we should discuss it with the council first and give them the opportunity to finish. Are there stuff? Yeah, are they finished? Is there anyone else have any comments from Mr. Craven? Okay. I didn't want to cut them off. John Cravacher, 307 North Henry, and I sat up there for many years. You know, and many times people don't play in the same sandbox, but one thing that you always have to understand, Chris especially, is that you're public servants. You know, the information that's even on your tax forms can become, pub, you know, can become public. Um, many, what you say, what you do, Everything that, that happens in your life, yes, you got First Amendment rights, but however, people are watching, Bill. Everything you do, you live in a glass house, you know, and what you say, your mannerisms, how you act, you know, pull me aside and say, I don't like you, you know, right there in, in this at the farmer's market. I'll never forget that day. You know, when you pulled me aside and just said, I don't like you, I don't trust you, and no matter what you say. And that was over what we talked about at the coffee shop. When Mr. Reynolds, when, when Mr. Reynolds and you, you were already elected, did not take office yet, says, I will make you mayor. And I turned you down. And that's when Mike was voted in. And I was vice mayor. Everybody watches. Everybody watches. Everybody watches what you do. Chris, you know, I went to your, you know, you told me about your, which restaurant you went to. I went there because you managed that restaurant to see you. <laughs> yeah, to see your restaurant and see how it was. If you do something wrong, it's going to take five of you to get rid, rid of whoever. And if you don't really have the votes, Mike, I hate to say this, they just might get away with it again. May I please? Mr. Lighty. Mr. Grimmie brought up a really good point. It would be a shame for us to not go through the hearing with all this, but the issue that we're dealt with is that we, if we have this hearing, which is going to cost the city money, and then we vote to remove them, they're going to sue the city. We are in a lose-lose situation up here. There, I mean, none of us are going to be winners in this. I, it's so unfortunate we're in this, and honestly, the lack of humility that I'm seeing is the worst part in all this. You know, at some point, I, I wish I could see on your faces the, yeah, I regret all of this. So, I, I guess I'm curious, does anybody up, like out, out in the audience, I mean, how, how do you guys feel? I mean, we're, I guess, you know, raise your hand if, if you want to have them stay. I don't think we have enough facts. How much of the There's only one fact, he didn't file his facts, and that's it. Yes. Cut and your eye, done. Yes. Well, there shouldn't be a big hearing, all that. It's, mm -hmm. If you it's don't control, I don't understand that. Okay. Well, 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 let's, well, let's not get into inter-party troubles here You're right. with the audience. You're right. So, you know, the question that we asked ourselves, or I asked before, and Mr. Lowry, I think you did too, is, you know, since Mr. Shammy spoke up and he said, I'm not going to vote them off, you know, do we go ahead and not go through with the hearing? <sighs> Golly, what do we do? Mr. Kind of finish, Ms. Dinkler, real quick. Um, you know, we're, we're 
stuck in a we're, we're stuck in a bad way. I mean, do we have the hearing, remove them, have them sue the city, or do we not go through with the hearing and I mean, not go through the full process? I, I'm curious what everyone else is thinking. I feel like the, I talk a lot, and I don't know what everyone else is thinking. Do you think that they should be disciplined? How do how would we discipline them? No, I don't think they should be disciplined. I think they should be removed for breaking city charter. But it's going to cost the taxpayers. A lot if of they money. resign, <laughs> it's not going. To, I'm still going though. So if the, if we have a petition by the citizens, there will be. There will be. Okay, that's one way we can get by with it, and it's not going to cost us any money. But what the rest of us need to discuss is, are we going to go through with this? Yes, I'm sorry. I just want to raise two, two points. You have, um, with regard to the tax issue, um, there's been many, many points raised about the tax issue being confident, tax information being confidential. Tax information by statute, state and local, is confidential. However, it is not confidential when you have a municipal purpose in order to disclose it and that is the reason that it was disclosed and I had that certified that I could disclose it. Secondly, there is no discipline procedure in the charter for this city. So I want to make that clear. You don't have a discipline option. Mr. Stewart? I feel like we're waiting to hear the issues you know, the, the, we obviously, if you haven't received our letter, I, I hope you do, uh, we obviously disagree that it was proper, uh, that, that it was a legitimate municipal purpose to circumvent the actual process for disclosing tax information, which is either filing a complaint in court or publishing a list of delinquent files in the newspaper. Neither of those processes was followed. Instead, this was disclosed selectively in a public forum for political purposes. We do not agree that that's, that's, that's an official purpose. And yet this commission did not say that under those circumstances it would be, it would be permissible. We'll just, we'll just disagree on that. Um, but yeah, I think we're, we're waiting well into hearing matters. I, I would say the evidence is out there. You guys have seen the evidence because you see it before the July 4th hearing, the June 4th hearing. Uh, there's no hiding the ball here. You know what is on there. And so to, to conclude that based on everything that you've already seen, that there's not enough there for you to want to move forward with, this, with a new hearing. It's certainly within your discretion as council members. This is entirely your call. This is a council remedy. There is no, uh, there is nothing binding on you other than the charter which says it takes five people to do something. That's it. Mr. Cobb. M Mrs. Dinker. I, yes, and as, Mrs. I, Wait. Yes, and I will entertain your question. I'm just, I'm just slow thinking here for a second. I do just have to object to the mayor inviting his council to give the city council instructions on what is binding under the charter. I, this is, uh, I have, I have, I have invited due process into this proceeding out of fairness for the mayor and the vice mayor, but for the mayor to be inviting his council to give charter instructions is far reaching, Mr. Mayor. And this is why if, if council would proceed to a hearing and you would oversee it by way of example, it would be far fetched for the accused to be sitting as the presiding officer of his own hearing. And I would ask that you not instruct my clients any further on how to interpret its charter. You're not even, you're giving your opinion as a city. It, it is my job. There's a counterpoint. It, it is what I am contracted. I cannot have you interrupt me right. for this for this very purpose. I cannot hear you. <clears throat> I am deaf and I hear through cochlear implants. So if you talk and I'm still talking, I will not hear you. Um, I, I cannot have you instructing my client. If you want to give your uh, opinion on a legal issue, that's fine, but I'm not going to have you instruct my client on what they can do, and there is a difference there. So I would just ask that you respect that. Mr. Cobb. 
if we took a vote right now by the council to you know either remove them or keep them and what happens if it, we don't get the five votes it, you can't take a vote right now because you've heard no evidence my job up to this point is to instruct you on what your options are i have instructed you on issues of law i've told you if this happens it would amount to misconduct if if this is true this would be misconduct if he didn't file his taxes this would be misconduct i have verified for you that he has not filed his taxes i have told you if mr lindsay has done this this and this and this is what has been reported to me as a matter of law, I believe this would be misconduct. So you have the basis to move forward to bring these charges. You have had a motion brought before you for X, Y, and Z. The next step would be to proceed with your hearing. They've requested hearings. So then you all would sit as fact finders. If you find these sufficient facts to be true, then you would have a vote. If you have five affirmative votes, you would then have grounds for removal. Is that what you meant to ask Mr. Her? Shammy yeah. has told you uh, that without having that occur, that he's not going to vote, and so that's what's led you to this place. Mm -hmm. Mr. Oh. Oh. Mrs. Bain will want to speak. Ms. Mammon, do you still have something to say? No. Do you have anything? No, sir. Mr. Based on all this discussion, the uh, I think we should move the table this. Mr. What table what? The here. The here. Motions. Motions. Is there a second? No. No second for motioning the table. Okay. Dies without like a motion. Okay. All right. Council, anything else? <laughs> Mr. Mayor, I think the real discussion, like I said, um, since we already know that we are not going to have the votes, we already know it. Mr. Shamey already said he's not going to vote against the mayor and vice mayor without getting all the facts. Do we waste money doing this? I'm not saying this is the right thing to do. I'm just saying that we, now we've got to pick the lesser of two evils. But this, these are the cards that we are dealt with the rest of council. Mr. Cobb, Mr. Cook, Mr. Lowry. Mr. Finisher. Yeah. Mr. Mr. Lowry. Okay, if I'm understanding Mr. Shammy's comment, right, that he would not vote to remove the mayor because he felt that the, that the procedure and way it was handled up to the motion to remove him was improper, correct? So therefore, you are excusing the other issue at hand of the lack of paying five years, or I'm no, sorry, not paying, not filing for five years of your city taxes. So our quote unquote mistake, because I'm not gonna call it that, uh, makes you decide, well, it doesn't matter what Mr. Reynolds has done, you guys messed up, so, I mean, is, that's more or less, did I hear that right? Is that how anyone else took it? Okay, so I've got a couple nods. So uh, that, that tells me, you know, we, we, we're sworn in as a city councilman. Uh, it is our job to look out for the best interest of the city of New Carlisle, including any, um, you know, internal problems. You know, I'm shocked you called it political, uh, political games, whatever, uh, was it a, a political move. Uh, I don't know what the political move would be to do so. Uh, that's uh, pretty interesting. So, <laughs> political move to remove somebody for not filing taxes. I think that that we're doing what we were elected to do. When someone's not filing their taxes, I think it's a pretty big issue, and it's uh, another interesting piece of information that a councilman will excuse that and give the, give them a pass because he didn't like the way it was brought up. But he was also a part of the, the, the vote to stop information from being conducted and brought up to you at a meeting as well. So that's pretty interesting. Come from from you, Mr. Shammy. Counts. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Light. I'm, I'm sorry. I mean, we, we could talk for a blue in the face. We already got all the facts. I mean, we know everything that everyone has done. 
Um, we can go down the line, I mean, dissecting the letter we got of how, you know, condoning the actions of driving somebody to help sue the city, how that's okay. It's not, it's not okay. Um, council, what do you guys want to do? Do we go through with the hearing or do we not? If, if you don't have the five votes, there's no sense wasting money. I'll tell you that right now. There's too much money being thrown away here. And as far as I'm concerned, the vote needs to be taken to see if we want to pursue with it or not. And because if, if we can't get the five votes, that's the waste of money, waste of taxpayers' money. It needs to end. And from a practical point, the hearing is scheduled for the 16th, and so we need to know. Okay. Oh, should we continue, Mr. Lowry, Mr. Lighty? Are your motions? Mr. Lowry? Mr. Mayor, yeah, I, I, I'm, I understand what you're saying, Mr. Cobb, and uh, Mr. Graham, I, I, I get what you're saying as well. I find, you know, I may have made the motion to remove the mayor. Don't get me wrong, I did. Uh, but, you know, if, if they come to that meeting or that hearing and say, here it is, he, he filed, I have no problem voting to keep him on council. Absolutely. And I have, and I have not, you know, you may say, well, we already know you're going to vote. You made the motion. I don't know what he's got. He may bring me all this, these papers that show, boom, here it is. I filed my taxes. Uh, it was a mistake by our, our attorney and our city manager. And, uh, okay, they, there was a mistake and I'll, you know, I'll vote no to remove you. But to sit here and say you will not vote to remove them, that's uh, pretty unprofessional in my opinion. So I, I think, you know, Mr. Grimm nailed it. Um, it may be costly, but if I think it needs to be moved forward with. I, I won't retract the motion. Mr. Slide. I would like to see us go through with the hearing. Um, I, I mean, I hate to think that it comes down to myself and Mr. Lowry every single time we have these types of discussions. I would really, really like to hear what anyone else is thinking up on this council. Um, I think the right thing to do is to go through it. But if I am being told that we do not have the votes already, you know, why are we going to spend the money when we can turn it over to the citizens to have okay. the, uh, I know you agree, but before I, make, before I give my answer, I would love to hear what everyone else is thinking. Basically, I think you just said it in a nutshell. We don't have the votes. Why spend the money? Now, again, if he's paid his taxes, as Mike has said, done the filing, where are we at that point? If the, and I respect the law director's opinion. I have no problem with that. I guess my concern is, number one, what is going to be the outcome of this? If we don't have the votes and we spend another thirty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000 to go through this dog and pony show, then I think we're very negligent with the citizens' money. I agree. We need to hear the evidence before all of these factors. But again, had the charges been filed, the mayor been through a court of law and him been found innocent, him been found guilty, then I think at that point we've got more to go on than what we're sitting here talking about. You know, somebody says he's paid it. Somebody says we don't. We don't have any proof that he's received any notification from XYZ company. I have Randy's word. I'm not doubting that word. I have Ethan's word that, no, it didn't happen. I'm not a judge. I'm not a lawyer. But I do know this. We as a city cannot afford to spend X amount of dollars to go through this dog and pony show. So what would you suggest we do if we don't have the votes? Do we motion to table those ordinances indefinitely? I don't see you have any choice. Mrs. Bible, if you don't mind stating your name and address, please. Judy Bible, 806 White Pine Street, New Carlisle. Um, I just, you know, 
what it's kind of hard water. to so can, can you hear me yeah sorry there's a water hose oh. back here that just turned on oh okay. sorry um with mayor reynolds and the not filing if that's all been taken care of that's something i don't really have that big an issue with because if another citizen myself included had not filed a couple years and i have since done that and i've paid the penalties and i've done all that i can't say that okay that's something we should remove him for the only thing i would like to see mayor reynolds not do is you need a poker face your your feelings are very visible when citizens or someone else on council is talking so you know that is not a good thing mr lindsay there's been a couple of times that i have heard you respond to citizens becky at i think the june whatever meeting it was very inappropriately um when you're talking to a citizen and the citizen is questioning you you get very fired up and defensive and that is not the way you respond to the people who elected you we're the ones who are paying for you to be on council we're the ones who elected you if you cannot respect the citizens right to question you without getting angry and defensive that's a problem something i do have a problem with yeah because I'm going to ask more. without us putting you in that position of power, so to speak, you wouldn't be there. You are there to work for us. You need to respect us when we question you about something you've done. I find what you did with Mr. Bridges totally inappropriate. If I did that to somebody where I work, I wouldn't have a job. Bottom line. And that's all I got to say. Thank you, Mrs. Bible. Ms. Dinkler, I would like an answer to this. Do we have the right to postpone this hearing until after said court case? In other words, if, if charges are filed against the mayor for not filing his taxes, do we have the right to postpone this hearing until after that fact? You can. I think we have got our answer, fellow. I make a motion that we postpone this hearing until after said court case. Mr. Stewart. They can stay a motion. They can take a motion. They can take a motion. I would agree with that. But I mean, the idea was to say, well, I, I think it's good to clarify. I mean, all right, let me, motion, let me. Table, stay. It means the same thing. Let me question your point at that point. Mike can withdraw the motion. He does not that, need to withdraw. Well, the well, hang on a minute. Let me finish yeah. here. He can withdraw his motion. At that point, after the court case, we can reinstall that motion or make a new motion. Am I correct? Pardon me? Can I give my answer to this? Sure. Question? Yeah, our understanding, our understanding of the charter is that there's two ways out of this. The motion can be withdrawn. If that doesn't happen, then a vote of uh, four members of the council to the motion to table the motion, to, to table both of the removal motions. At that point, essentially, they're, they're dead. Um, there's nothing in your charter that prevents uh, any member from bringing a motion for removal at any time. This isn't, this is not a charter issue. It's a rules of council issue. It is not a charter issue. None of these issues, none of these issues are addressed in the charter, Mr. Cook. These are all rules of, these are all rules of council. We follow the Roberts Rules of Council unless they are otherwise addressed in the Rules of uh, Roberts Rules, unless it's otherwise addressed in the Rules of Council. Okay, then at the same time, can we do this under? And you know, you know that currently there is no pending K 
case right. against the mayor. Okay. Right. Because There's no pending person. case, but basically. And there may not be, there may not be a criminal case because he would first have the opportunity to go through amnesty. So I do not expect that there is going to be a criminal case against the mayor at this point because as his counsel has already represented, he has cleared up the, uh, the tax filing. So at this at this juncture, there may there may not be. I have not verified that that has occurred. Do you do you share my understanding of the mechanisms? Yes. So what I'm hearing is the fact that apparently there may not be any court filing. And the court filing does not define what constitutes misconduct. The conduct is defined by law. So you look to case law to define what the conduct is. Did a public official go out and engage in drunk driving? You don't have to, uh, that's how you define what is misconduct as a matter of law. So. In this case, it's, you know, as you've heard from your public, it's, it's not difficult, um, but that's, that's, how you, that's how you look at it. But I have not had any further contact um, with regard to what has or has not happened with regard to his filings. So uh, we've turned it over to council and we were going to have the hearing, and then we would see where his defenses laid at that point. I think the further we get into this, the more cloudier it gets. Motion, I'm going to make a motion. We go ahead and take a vote on this and get it over with. To table it? No. To either we charge you? Or, or we can't do that. We have to either table we have to or not table it, or let it go to the hearing. So, I mean, if you want to make a motion to table this, then that's acceptable. Well, there has to be some way to stop losing money over well, this. Motioning to table it would stop that. For the time being. But, yeah. Considering there won't be any court charges. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lowry. Again, I'm going to hit this again because it's just driving me nuts. What did that tell you when you got an answer before the hearing? I mean, does that tell you anything? Do you get a yes or no answer before it ever happens? It almost sounds like that there was some uh, behind the scene work going on again. It's more than happened more than once. I don't know what we do. I know Don Why is it going to cost more money to go to a hearing? Yeah. Because the special counsel. Why would it cost more money to the city to go to a hearing? Because you already have your evidence. Everything is done through the CCA, right? So shouldn't, and you're going to be at the meeting, the next meeting, so it wouldn't cost me more money. Would it? Special counsel will come in to put on the evidence, okay. and so it would be the time taken to put on the evidence. Okay. And the expectation, I think, Mr. Langan, as you remember, is if there was a vote to remove, and there's they a, would expect Mr. Reynolds and Mr. Lindsay to sue the city in response. Yes, and we received a threatening letter of a lawsuit on Friday from Mr. Reynolds and Mr. Lindsay's attorney threatening to sue everybody. Yeah, I, I, I have to object to the way that was characterized. I, I have to object. Well, it was threatening to Here. sue the way I read it to me, Mr. Gray, Mr. Mr. Lowry, and Mr. Lighty. The, the city has to be defendant if there is an action for mandamus to reinstall an elected official who's been removed. I think it's entirely improper to try to threaten to sue anybody up here other than the city. Well, we can Perhaps provide you with a copy of the letter and you can read it for yourself. I was not trying to mischaracterize it. That's just how I read it. We have an either withdrawal or motion to table. So that's where we're at at this point. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lighty. Again, do we go to the hearing, either remove them, get the city sued, or not remove them and waste taxpayers' money? Which one? What? If we go through with the hearing, 
and if they were get it removed, they would sue the city. Right. If we uh, go through the hearing and we don't remove them, we're wasting money. Um, you know, given all the facts, like I said before, you know, we don't have a good option. I don't want to at all. I think this is, uh, given the facts, I, I feel like we're, we're giving up or like we're giving in. You know, I can just imagine how this is going to be spun. Uh, Councilman Lighty takes back uh, removing Vice Mayor Lindsay, but I hope that the facts are actually in the paper and the news of why. Of why. Because we, we are in a no-win situation here, and it's so unfortunate. You know, I, I can't believe we're in this position, and we're having to say these words out loud, and everyone seems to be okay with it up here. We, we shouldn't be. So, I, golly, guys, I, I, I really don't know what to do in this situation. I, I guess if we're going to do the responsible thing for the taxpayers, which is not you know, the way things should be ran, I, I guess we give it over to the citizens. And, and you guys speak your voice. I mean, hopefully everyone watches this council video and sees you know, what we're up against. But... You know, the proper thing to do is to go to the hearing and, and you know, let them go through the right process, but we know there's no point to it already. I'll let you guys speak. Uh, Mr. Lighting, I hope that what I'm about to say can potentially make this decision a little easier for all of you. Um, anyone who's interested, please come out to the farmer's market this Saturday morning. Becky and I will be circulating recall petitions for the citizens to decide. Um, at this point, I, like Mr. Cook said, I think the more it's discussed, the muddier it gets. And since they've put you in this position where you're unable to move forward because of cost, we'll take care of it since they're unable to resign. I don't disagree um, with any of the points that have been made. I, I, it's going to cost the city money, and that's certainly not a position that we want to be in um, for frivolous expenses um, when this could be handled succinctly and professionally by parties involved um <laughs> but you know they're not going down without a fight so we'll let the people decide and i think that's the most fair way to do it and it takes i hope some of the burden off of you guys feeling the guilt or responsibility of being the ones who introduced a motion and then have to backtrack and go back on your word that's not how we're viewing it. We're viewing no, it. No, but that's but like you said, you yeah. know, you're putting yourself in a position where the public could say, well, well, look at what Mr. Lighty did. He introduced this big thing, and then he just stepped back and said no. And it also, I think, eliminates the potential for anyone whose mind is already made up. If there's a recall petition and it goes through, it's not up to you guys anymore. Mr. Mayor, I'll keep this short. Mr. Lighty. Okay. Since I keep on being asked, um, I think we should hand it over to the citizens. That's my, that's my opinion. I, I wish like crazy that, that's not what it come to, but I'll also say this. When we walk out of here, all of us, all of us, it is so important that when we go home, we pray for each other, we're showing grace to one another. You know, obviously we have these kind of differences, but let's remember why we are here and what we are doing. And I've said it before, and I'm sticking to my guns, the expectation is when you are up here that they could, you condone yourself in a behavior that you would want to be treated <coughs> okay? So when we walk out, don't be running to social media and saying, you know, they're turning this around, you know, we won, don't do it, don't do it. No one wins in this, no one. That's all I got. Um, I, I do have a question since the subject was brought up of if they were removed they would sue the city why did everybody on council run to be on council I would assume it was because you care about the city so why would you turn around and sue the city that you are supposedly 
care so much about and want to move forward, but yet you want to do something so detrimental to that city. I mean, it, that does not make any sense to me. Can I answer that? Judy, I understand where you're coming from, but I think by virtue of the present day legal system, at times citizens are charged, but they in turn believe themselves to be innocent. And that's where this now stands. Okay. But it, it still seems to me to be skewed, you know, that if you care so much about the city, why would you do something that's so detrimental to the city? I mean, that's, that's, I mean, it's like me saying, boy, I love my car, but I'm going to go out there and run the bejesus out of it so it falls apart sooner. I mean, it, it's, it's just like you're going to take it down a path of destruction. I mean, that's what it seems like. That's it. Don Hall, 205 North Scott. Just to follow up with your comment, ma'am, he has to pay for a lawyer, Mr. or Mayor Reynolds and Vice Mayor uh, Lindsay. So I, I, I do understand uh, if you have to file a civil suit you know, against the city because they didn't pro follow proper procedures for the removal, then there's going to be damages. And he shouldn't have to pay thousands of dollars for an attorney fee when the procedures aren't followed correctly. I mean, at the end of the day, and you guys all know I wrote you a letter the day after this, I watched it on YouTube, the procedures weren't filed correctly. I mean, you have your law director testifying, prosecuting, and being general counsel for the city. I mean, it's a problem. I, so I really think, you know, going in or going out of this, you guys, you, you got to follow the procedures. I mean, there, this has been a huge waste of time if there's going to be a withdrawal that this all could have been avoided if procedures would have been followed correctly. And if you conducted yourself in a proper manner, it all been avoided. And I mean, there's certain things that you can't say today in 2018. I mean, filing your taxes, I, I work for uh, the Attorney General Department of Taxation. I mean, you're not gonna file charges. You're not. I mean, it's gonna be settled. You're not gonna file charges. So the whole thing that this is a criminal charge, this is a misdemeanor. Are you also notifying people every time they get a speeding ticket? I mean, that's a misdemeanor. You pay a fine. That's it. It's settled. So I guess I'm just frustrated that, I mean, the elephant's in the room. This is not going to win. It's only going to cost the city thousands of dollars. We really, we have so many things to be proud of. This was a great weekend. Mike, I was so proud of your pool this weekend. I didn't get a chance to take my kids there. It's not my fault. But I was like, well, I know what, I see your truck there. Your truck. I know your truck because I pass it on the way to when we work on the base together. And I know on your day off, if I see that truck in there, or after you've been busting your tail all day at the base and I see your truck at the pool, I know what you're doing. And you should be proud of yourself. And Mr. Cook, those fireworks, I know some people may disagree, could not be prouder. I mean, it took me 30 minutes to get from Dayview to my house on Scott Street. And I was so happy, and I had four kids to put to bed that night. <laughs> so why are we talking about this? This is, this is piddly stuff, and I'm sorry it is. It's not criminal. Let him get charged. If Bill gets an OVI or Mr. Cobb gets an OVI, he gets charged, or there's preponderance of the evidence, we get a police report, and then you guys can have a hearing and follow the proper procedure. Let an internal investigation happen. Don't have people testifying when you have an accused up there who has no lawyer. I mean, this is common sense. Let's just, I mean, basic law, basic facts. I mean, let due process. And everybody can be frustrated with, the, and I know this is New Carlisle, and we want to do this Wild West stuff sometimes, but there is a law in place, there's a constitution, there's due process. If you've ever been in a seat where you've been accused of a crime, and you could. You could totally be innocent. And by God, you'd be so happy that you live in America and you have an opportunity to have representation and there's due process. So please, all I ask is that you guys echo Mr. or Councilman Lighty's the humility speech. I totally agree with you. Please, but also please just follow the procedures. That's all I'm asking.
Thank you. Mr. Lowry. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Hall, I mean, I, if, I'm going to comment and, uh, on what you just said. Follow the procedures. <coughs> That's, that is perfect. Follow the procedures of what we were trying to do. But you get someone who wants to vote and give you their answer before the procedures have been followed. <laughs> it's fruit of the poisonous tree. It's already tainted. You have a law director who's testifying and given instructions on how this hearing should conduct. She should recuse herself. Period. There's no way. It's a problem. I mean, even if you get the removal, you're going to have a civil suit. Exactly. And I can tell you, I emailed you and I said where the procedures were violated. Okay. I'm not a lawyer. I've worked in law for 10 years. I know how I'm in charge of administrative hearings at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. I know how rules can get relaxed. But, I mean, these are basic constitutional rights. You had somebody who essentially was accused of a crime on the spot and never had his rights read. I mean, you accused him. And you never read him his rights. I am not, I am not criminally prosecuting him, sir. But you referred it to the prosecutor. So you know somebody who has rights. Criminally prosecuting him. This is a procedure under a charter. So was he, was he, okay. So he, he you know he violated the law. And you're, and you're the direct law director of the city who has the authority to take that information and refer it to a prosecutor for charges. And you don't have an ethical obligation to, to, to not read him his rights and Mirandize him? I'm sorry, sir, but you are confused. So you think that's proper procedure, ma'am, as, as a law director who has the ability to refer charges to the prosecutor, you think that that is proper procedure to accuse him and testify yourself against him without him having representation there? Sir, we are, he is, he has been given his due process rights under the procedure owed to him in well, the charge. Really lawyer here. We have so you had a hearing. When you interrupt me, I can hear you. We have not been prosecuting him in a criminal proceeding. We have been talking about the definition of what is misconduct, and that is where we have been talking about what constitutes a first degree misdemeanor, which is the non filing of municipal tax returns, which is a first degree misdemeanor. No one has filed charges against the mayor in the municipal court. So, with all due respect, you're confused on the procedure that is taking place here. And the hearing that was set for the 16th is under the charter. And this is an administrative process. It is not a criminal process. And I did read the email that you wrote. Thank you for your expression, but this is not something that is owed a Miranda right. Okay, let me ask you a question. Are you worried about a civil suit against the, against the city because procedures were not followed correctly? Am I worried about the suit that's been threatened against the city because of what? Because of procedures not being filed pro properly. I am not. In the 4 June. Because I have carefully reviewed the procedures and following the procedures is something that I am charged with, and we have made our very best effort to follow them. The charter is not the most carefully drafted thing, and we have made our very best effort to comply with it, and that's why we have taken great care to issue written opinions. Mr. Stewart's job is to take his best effort to defend his clients. I have contacted him every step of the way so that he would know what we were doing, so that he could be here to advocate for his clients. And I even- Why wasn't he here on the 4th of June? I'm sorry, what? Why wasn't he here on the 4th of June? I spoke to him beforehand. Was he invited? Was he, was he aware that his he, client was going to be- In fact, I had a telephone conference with him and his clients. Yes, indeed. We spoke for some time. So, I mean, I, mean, I think and this I, is a little, I think this is an, can, can I finish my point, ma'am? Can I finish I my point? The mayor, I told the mayor that he would want to have personal counsel involved before I spoke to him about anything. So okay. I have taken care to ensure that these individuals had due process and had personal counsel involved. Okay, so my understanding of the charter is they're not, is not supposed to be a hearing before the hearing. Oh, right. When you had people testifying and giving evidence, I mean, is that follow, is it, where's that in the charter? No one has testified. You testified. I have Mr. Testified. Bridge testified. Yes, you did. I'm sorry, I have not testified. The emails, ma'am, that you received. 
You're, you're, you're a victim in the, in the alleged allegation. You had the problem with the email being sent to you and the tone in which it was sent. All right. We're, we're just going to have to agree to disagree, sir. Yeah, Mr. Hall, thank you so much. Okay. Where, where are we at now? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lowry. Mr. Shame, if I may ask you, do you stand by what you'd said earlier when you read your letter? That'll, that, that, your answer will put an end to it. Yes. There you go. City of New Kalau and your tax paying citizens do not wish to go to a hearing because he's set his mind before he's heard any of the evidence. I will make the motion to withdraw my, unfortunately, to remove the mayor because there is no point going to it because your councilmen who you have elected and pay with your city tax dollars has apparently got some sort of a deal or some sort of conversation worked out. Okay. No, no, not okay. You've told these people that you're going to vote no regardless of what you hear at that hearing. So there's no point moving forward. Thank you. I remove, I, I'll withdraw the motion because it is pointless. Thank you, Mr. Okay. Council, anything else? Mr. Mayor, I already Mr. make a motion to remove or to, uh... oh golly, what is it? Withdraw. I make a motion to withdraw. Uh, my motion to remove Vice Mayor Lindsay. Council, anything else? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Ms. Lighting, you had two. You had two motions. Oh, okay. Um, I make a motion. I make a motion to withdraw. My motions. That's what I said, though. Okay. Did you say motions? Nope. You had, two, you had two motions to withdraw. Oh, I do? Yeah. Okay. Mr. Mayor? Mr. Lighty. No, two motions to withdraw Mr. Lindsay you had. Yep. yep. Okay. You, did we, do we have on the record that he is with, are you withdrawing two motions to withdraw Mr. Lindsay? No. Okay. I could say that. You had two motions okay. to withdraw Mr. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Lighting, I make a motion to, re to uh, remove my two motions to remove Vice Mayor Lindsay. <clears throat> Council, anything else? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lowry. I'd like to add to the audience that you guys need to remember this. <laughs> this is probably going to start <laughs> a very serious downward spiral for, spiral for the city. You are going to have council members walk off of this council who are here working their asses off. You're going to have a city manager who has pulled this city out of debt leave because he's not going to sit here and take his stuff. And I don't blame him one bit. Freedom of speech. Yeah, you got freedom of speech, Bill, to put on that letter, whatever you want, but there's also consequences. You hear people, you hear kids in middle school that tell their teachers, well, I can say that word because it's freedom of speech. Yeah, you can say it, but there, there's... <laughs> Good God, is this where we are at? <laughs> wow. <laughs> that, that's all I gotta say. I, I make a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Hey, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Flighty. Mr. Lowry, council. Yes, that, that's, that's where we are as a council. Let me say again, when we walk out of here, and I mean everybody, the expectation is we do not go to social media and say, I won tonight. There is no winner tonight at all. And I am sorry to the citizens that elected all of us up here that we're in this situation. But we're going to put it in your hands. We're going to put it in your hands. And I'm actually OK with that. So tonight, I'm going to pray for you. I hope you pray for us. Um, we got a lot of good things going on in town. You know, be proud of this town. I'm sorry that council is acting the way it's acting. We're put in this type of situation, but uh, sooner or later this will be resolved. And uh, I just hope moving forward, like I've said so many times, that uh, we act in a way that we represent the citizens the same way that we would want to be treated. I gotta say, again, Mr. Mayor, I move that we adjourn the meeting. Have a second. Second. All right, we are adjourned.